Color OS has slowly been becoming one of the best and most feature packed versions of Android over the years. And with their newest version, Color OS 16, it's even better than ever. Like, let's take a look at the brand new lock screen themes that we have available, which in my opinion, are not only the most extensive that you can find on a phone right now, but they're also just about the best designed as well. You just come into the settings app, tap on home screen, lock screen and style. And if you then tap here where it says all flux themes, you'll be taken to this section here that lets you see all the new themes that Color OS 16 has to offer. From these default color OS options, which feature this beautifully sleek animation and this subtle depth effect, there's also these sublime grandeur options, which are somehow even more impressive with these sweeping live wallpapers and amazing lock screen clocks to go with. There's also these really unique looking live clock options, which feature motion photos inside the clock. And that's on top of a long list of new static lock screen options as well. Plus, if you liked the styles that came with previous Color OS versions, then you can just scroll down here and tap on Past Collections, and there you go. And one of my favorite parts about these new lock screen options is how seamlessly they connect to the always on display. So if we come out of that Flux theme section and swipe up, you'll see this option here for our always on display settings. And if we tap that, you'll see that we have three options for our always on display, the classic version, the seamless version, and this new full screen option, which is my personal favorite, because it allows you to view your lock screen wallpaper alongside other key bits of information on your always on display. And it also very seamlessly blends in with your lock screen as well with this lovely animation. Now, if you don't want to see your wallpaper though, then you might instead prefer this seamless option, which is just as smooth in terms of animations, but it doesn't show you wallpaper. From there, let's unlock the phone. And first off, can we just take a moment to appreciate that fingerprint sensor animation? Like, let's just do that one more time for fun. And I mean, wowza, does that look good? And in fact, speaking of that, let's discuss animations because they've been cranked up to 11 with Color OS 16. Like, check this out. If I just move and nap around on the home screen and then release, notice how everything bounces back in an incredibly fluid way. Or what about these subtle lighting effects when I move my finger over the various buttons in the calculator app? Or check out how when I tap and close various elements within Oppo's built-in naps, notice how the animation originates from where I touch something and then cleanly returns back to its starting position when I navigate back. There are so many instances of this throughout the OS, which you'll see more of throughout this video, but it's these animation improvements that just make using the phone a true joy. Even the app opening and closing animations on the home screen, I mean, they were already pretty great with prior Color OS versions, but they're somehow now even more fluid. And the best part is that you can still use third-party icon packs and the animations look just as good. And here's a feature that goes largely unnoticed. If you long press the home screen, then tap on home screen settings, if you scroll down a bit and tap on app startup and closing animation speed, you can actually speed things up just a little bit by switching this setting from standard to enhanced, which I think strikes a really nice balance of fluidity and speed and is actually the setting that I prefer to use. Now, speaking of our home screen, on top of the extensive customization options that we've had for a while, we've also now got the option to create adaptive icons and folders as well. So check this out. I can simply long press this app icon here and you'll see that we get this new bounding box with this little handle on the bottom corner here. And I can then drag that not only horizontally, but also vertically and then even both ways to enlarge it into different shape configurations. But then while I'm still in editing mode, I can actually now tap to add any of the app's shortcuts to the icon. Like for the camera app here, I can add a shortcut to any of these shooting modes for quick access, or I can of course disable them and leave them as blank instead if I like. And if I do that, it leaves this really unique but cool looking larger app icon. And you can also do the same thing with folders too. So I can long press this large folder here and drag the handle like so to resize it into these new shapes. And honestly, this just allows users to create some really sleek looking home screen layouts, which I reckon lots of people are gonna love. Another new update with Color OS 16 is the upgraded Aqua Dynamics interface. So this is the feature that's kind of like Apple's Dynamic Island feature, which has been around since Color OS 14, but it's now also been upgraded to have even more of those beautifully fluid animations. So let's say we've got a voice recording running as well as a stopwatch. And let's say we've also got some music playing too. When we close those apps, we can now tap on the capsule up here and it'll show us all of our alerts on the one page so that we can interact with them without having to open the full screen apps. But then check this out. When we tap to open any of the apps and then close them again, then tap, then open another and so on and so forth. I mean, just take a look at these incredibly fluid animations. 
Oh, and if you come into the settings app and search for live alerts, then open up this option here, you can actually tweak what happens when you tap the capsule. So instead of launching the card interface, it'll instead launch the full app. Just a nice bit of control that Oppo gives you depending on how you wanna use the feature. And if you wanna hide the capsule, just swipe like this to dismiss each of the live alerts. And there you go. Color OS 16 also brings about an updated quick settings panel design, which by the way, you can swipe horizontally to switch between it and your notification panel, which is lovely. But if you tap the pencil icon here, you actually now have more control over the quick settings panel layer. So this section up here is reserved for larger icons and tiles like your media player or your brightness and volume sliders, for example. But what's fantastic is that we can now reposition any of these elements or we can even remove them completely if we like. And then you can also drag any of your smaller tiles into this area as well, which creates a larger version of the toggle, meaning you can now enable my favorite new toggle, this really handy ring and mode switch. That said, if this split quick settings and notification panel design isn't quite your thing, you can simply tap the three dot icon here, then tap on customize quick settings and switch this setting here to classic. And that'll mean you get access to the older combined quick settings and notification panel layout. So there you go. I actually prefer the look and feel of the split layout though. So I'm gonna re-enable that and then check this out. If we tap the edit button here, then tap the plus icon and scroll down a bit to this tool section, there's this really handy but kind of hidden option called speaker cleaner. And when we add that to our quick settings panel, then tap to get out of editing mode, then tap on the toggle to open it and then hit start, it'll actually play a specific sound and vibration pattern that'll clean out any dust or water that might be sitting in your phone speakers. How cool is that? Then here's another cool toggle for those privacy oriented folks. So we'll again come into our quick settings panel, tap the edit button, then the plus button, and again, scroll down to this tool section, but this time we'll add this camera access toggle. We'll tap and hit done. And then let's say you're using an app like Instagram where you don't want it accessing your camera inadvertently, or perhaps you're handing your phone to someone and you don't want them taking photos. Whatever the scenario, you can just swipe into your quick settings panel, tap that block camera access toggle, and check this out. If I now go to launch the camera in any app, it's completely blocked system wide. All right, from there, let's talk about all the new AI updates that Oppo have brought about with Color OS 16, starting with their brand new Mindspace feature, which is basically like your all-in-one hub for saving anything important. So let's say you stumble upon a healthy breakfast recipe on Instagram, and then later on, you find some great ideas for healthy lunches scrolling the web. And then amidst all that, you found some delicious yet easy to cook dinner recipes on Twitter. Well, all you need to do for each one is swipe up on your screen with three fingers and everything on your screen, even if it's out of view, will get analyzed and then saved to your mind space. Then here's what's really cool. Mindspace is actually directly integrated with Google Gemini. So for example, I could then activate Gemini and say something like, put together a meal plan for me based on content from my Mindspace and check this out. It'll connect to my Mindspace and within mere seconds, it'll generate a really effective meal plan using recipes that I saved to my Mindspace. And even cooler yet is that if you activate Mindspace with some sort of schedule on screen, it'll then prompt you to add that directly to your calendar. On top of that, if you have any of Oppo's newer devices with the new snap key, if you have it set to launch the Mindspace functionality, you can then long press that key to attach voice notes to your captures. And by the way, all of these animations that have been implemented alongside the Mindspace feature, they are just next level. I sometimes activate the feature just so I can see the incredible animations. Then staying on the topic of AI for another minute or so, and next up are the updates to Oppo's recorder app. Not only has it had a bit of a facelift visually, but it also now provides real-time speech transcription and automatically recognizes and tags different speakers within a recording. Then when you complete a recording, firstly, how neat is that little animation there? But then when you open a recording, let's say this one here, then tap on summary, you can now tap here where it says general and then switch between a bunch of format templates. And this just makes browsing through your various recordings and getting the key takeaways such a seamless experience. Oh, and if you tap this share icon up here, you now have a bunch of new options for sharing your recordings, including sharing a link to the entire file, or you can just share the audio or just the transcript. And you can even choose to share the summary in various file formats, which is just seriously awesome flexibility. Oppo has also added some handy updates to the AI writer tool. So in system apps like the Notes app, for example, you can now tap this AI writer icon like so to access all of its extensive features, like completely rewriting documents in various styles or proofreading documents or formatting them and so forth. And you can even now generate mind maps or tables from documents, which is wild. 
And I mean, again, just look at these animations as the mind map gets generated. This is the sort of stuff that just completely elevates a phone's software experience, in my opinion. And then lastly, for our AI related tools, Oppo has also expanded on its existing suite of AI photo editing tools with a brand new feature called AI Relight, which essentially takes portrait style images that may have been taken in less than optimal lighting conditions and then enhances them with a single tap. And you can then increase or decrease how strong the effect is. And it's one of those features that you just really need to experiment with yourself because some of the before and afters that you can get using this feature will seriously impress you. Then from there, we've got all the updates related to Oppo's O Plus Connect feature. So if you haven't heard of it, O Plus Connect is a feature that Oppo has been working on for a few years now that essentially makes it easier to share files between your favorite devices, Mac and iPhone devices included. And that also includes the amazing touch to share feature that was introduced with Color OS 15, which now features this beautifully updated animation. But then on top of that, they've also just released their all new O Plus Connect app, which you can download on your Mac or Windows PC. And once set up, it'll sync to your Oppo device, which then unlocks a heap of super handy features. So you can still use the app to view, manage, and even edit files from your Oppo phone directly on your computer, which worked with the previous version of O Plus Connect as well. But now it also syncs your clipboard history. So if you copy any text on your computer, you can then instantly paste it on your phone and vice versa. And even cooler is that you can now use this screencast feature to control your phone wirelessly from your PC. So let's say you're in a meeting or in a lecture where taking notes on your phone might look a little unprofessional. You can instead just use the screencast feature and take the notes via your computer instead. And that's just one very simple example. There are honestly so many more really cool ways that you could make use of this feature to really level up how you use your phone. All right, to bring us home, I'm gonna whip through seven quick tricks that I reckon a lot of you didn't know existed on Color OS. Firstly, the file dock, which is where you can grab almost anything like some highlighted text, for example, and then drag it over to the right of your screen like so, then release it to add it to your file dock. And here's me capturing a screenshot of the home screen and then doing the same thing by dragging it over and releasing. You can then access the file dock in other apps like here in Gmail, for example, by simply swiping into your smart sidebar like so. And that then allows you to quickly drag and drop anything that you may have stored there into that new app then I'm sure that most of you already knew about that three finger swipe down gesture that I just used to take a screenshot. But what you may not have known is that if you first hold your three fingers on the screen like this, you'll then get the option to take a partial screenshot instead, which saves you a whole extra step if you're only looking to capture a portion of your screen. Then if we get out of that and open up our settings, then come all the way down and open this accessibility and convenience section, there's a few really neat features here worth trying out. Firstly, if we scroll down and open this gestures and motion section, then tap on screen off gestures and then enable it, we get a bunch of gestures here that will let us launch various actions whilst our screen is off. So we've got the simple double tap to turn on or off the display, which by the way, doesn't work without this feature enabled, but then we can also draw an O shape to quickly launch into the camera. Then if we get out of that, we can also draw a V shape to turn on the flashlight and of course, to turn it back off. And then if we unlock the phone, then tap this option down here, we can even set up these other gestures to open any app of our choosing if we like. But then if we get out of that and come back, we also have this option down here, which when enabled, lets you turn on or off your phone's torch when the screen is off, just by pressing and holding down the volume down button. And this is even more intuitive than drawing a V shape in my opinion, because you don't even need to touch the display. Then if we unlock the phone again and come back, then swipe up a little. I'm sure that most of you already know about Oppo's fantastic floating window feature, which is where you can swipe an app up and move it towards the upper right of your screen to launch it into a floating window interface. But this section in the settings app lets you customize the feature even further. I first like enabling both the swap apps and adjustable transparency toggles, because check this out, when I now open an app and then swipe it into that floating window mode, then tap to expand it, I can now tap this three dot icon here and then activate this transparency slider that lets me adjust how opaque the window is. Then if I make that smaller again and then open up another app in the background, because I enabled that swap apps toggle, I can now just double tap that floating window and the floating app will become the primary app and the primary app will become the floating window app. And you can do it as many times as needed if you like. The other thing you can do is if you come back into your floating window settings, you can also tap this window control option and switch this to buttons. And now when you expand your floating window, you'll get these three buttons at the top of the window that allow you to full screen, minimize or close out of the floating window app just with the press of a single button. 
Then if we close that floating window and come back, then swipe down a little bit more. There's also this quick launch feature, which is actually disabled by default, but when you enable it, you can add any apps or app shortcuts to this menu here. And once you're happy with your selections, if we first lock our phone, anytime we then unlock our phone with our fingerprint, if we then keep holding, it'll show us our selections and we can just slide our finger to the shortcut that we wanna launch. And there we go. And then last but not least, if we come back into the settings app, then come down a bit and open up our notifications and quick settings menu, then scroll down a bit and tap on more settings. There's a bunch of handy options available in this section here, but this one called smart notification hiding, which again is also disabled by default, it is super handy in particular. Once it's enabled, it essentially makes it so that notifications on your lock screen will have their content hidden whenever the selfie camera detects that someone other than you is looking at your phone, meaning you don't have to worry about someone snooping in on your private conversations. But if you're the one holding your phone and the selfie camera detects that, then your notifications will become immediately visible. How cool is that? But there you have it, 20 hidden tricks that I'm hoping will help you to make the most of your Oppo device. A big thanks needs to go to Oppo for partnering up with me to make this video possible. It's brands like Oppo who keep this channel running, so big ups to them. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.